How's it going, everybody? We're here in Buliglaw country at uh, the place that school works. We're here with our honored guest, Miss uh, Bertha Peters, for our uh, next installment of the Food Sovereignty Series. We're going to be talking to you guys about acorns. So I'd like to introduce Miss Bertha Peters first and appreciate her coming on. Hello. Glad to be with you. And then we've also got uh, Dana Peters, Colgrove, Cole Cole excuse me, I apologize. Right. And then Barbara Jones as well here. And so we're going to get a little introduction to uh, to acorns and kind of start from finish. So I'll let these ladies kind of take it away. Okay, what I want to talk about first is <clears throat> this uh, way the Methodists have it was to crack acorns back in the day with the we got from this to a hammer and you know and then went on but this here you hold between your leg and crack your acorn um and this here the little one here is was my granddaughter she um uh, had to have one too but this it wasn't her original cracker but it was it will fit then she went to this size and this is marvelous actually but this is the one i had here for this and these here are last year's acorns. This is a K. Roy that I walk, Carrie Turner made. Mm -hmm. um, my brother made this uh, uh, um, ladle. You see, in Chris. And this here is. Uh, Hambone? Yeah. <laughs> this here is uh, a walk Tony Sylvia made. It's a paddle. And this acorn here was a uh, stone walls made. And these, these, uh, oh, I guess I can't walk around. I got it. <laughs> these here, uh, my brother made this one and my sister made this one. This was a women's spoon. And this here, uh, the, I walked Tony made uh, those two right there with the a mink on it. Um, and my sister Tweet made this one and this. And you made those? Mm -hmm. And Dana made the wooden ones there. This here is acorns from this year. We have my acorn ladies didn't go out very much looking for acorns this year. <laughs> <laughs> And, and this is last year's uh, acorn that needs to be ground up, but, and it comes into this kind of flower here. This here belongs to Marva Jones. This here is an old basket that was my great aunt's, and a uh, cousin made me this one, Jeremy. And, these are, and, and this here uh, rock, I was just telling, uh, Marva this morning, Tommy Wilson, I uh, gave it to me. It was his grandma, mm -hmm. Teresa Mitchell's, which also oh, was yeah. uh, Marva's great great grandma. Mm -hmm. And I used it for a while, then it cracked, so I quit using it because I didn't want it to break anymore. This this is uh, 2000, I guess you want to say, the new generation, how to crack <laughs> acorns. This is a machine that actually was just converted out of, from a walnut by hand to a, to a motor. And um, this is your end product. So it cracks it for you. Cracks all your acorns and then you just go through and clean it. So then, so then we get to this point where you put it in your clean, your, clean your acorns and you have it in your bucket. And then from there, we have another machine that a guy in Witchbeck made us. It's, it's a grinder, and so it makes it, um, powder out of your acorns. You make, you make your flour. 
and then we just I just ground that up earlier. And this right here is how to store it. Um, I try to make a, a gallon out of it, so it makes about two gallons when you process it, mm -hmm. which is about a case and a half of acorns in a pint. So, and then we just put it in a five gallon bucket and seal it up. You get about four or five of them in a bucket, so. Yeah. Um, did you want me to turn the generator on to run now? I can go turn that on now while she's uh, so we can get that, that part done. Okay. Yes, and oh, I made this too um, a while back we, because we were having problems uh, drying all the acorns. So we had dance camp. We had to have 10 gallons for 10 days. Basically, pop your nuts for your. Hitting your thumb. <laughs> so then, after we get this this floor right here, I have a a little tub that I fill up, and then we take it in the house in the evening time when we sit in front of the TV. We clean it up. Same like, like sticks when you have sticks and things on the TV and things like that. Yeah, it doesn't take very long to run a, a stack of acorns through here compared to having to do it by hand. You would be here for a couple of days trying to do a whole stack. Just keep your house in full. This one. You want this one, Dana? I got it over here. So then this is all. <laughs> It's kind of cheating, but it saves a lot of time. So when you're doing a whole bunch, like if we had to do all that, it'd probably take me all day to mm -hmm. to, to make flour out of it. If of I had course. to do, do it the other way, it would probably take me days. Yep. I just wanted to say uh, this on, on these, you can see we've got some dark ones in here, but uh, we black but, acorn. But, but we'll run that through too because it kind of makes it sweeter acorn. Mm. But you don't not a whole bunch, just you know, as long as it's some in there. 
for you this is almost two of these so I can get um, a couple of a couple of these out of that so I just want to remind everybody that um, you know, as we walk out towards the fire and preparate, prepping the acorns, if at all we lose service um, on the, our live feed, we are recording this on a separate camera also, and so it will go. That will probably be the one that we put to our YouTube page. So it will be uh, our wonderful camera person here. So we. Uh, that's the one that's going to go to our YouTube page. So if we do cut out and we lose you guys, we apologize. Once we get closer to the house, we'll get you back, and uh, yeah, we'll be able to check that out on our YouTube post. What I'd like to say too, the sign up there, uh -huh. because we definitely are blessed. That we are. Have this. That we are. It's a beautiful day here in New York Country. Quotation, Washington Day, Tane, Yo, hey no, hey what no, hiya. Quotation, Washington day, tene ha wanna show. Yo, hey no, hey what no, hiya. Washington day, tene ha wanna show. Hey yo, hey no, hey what no, hiya. Hey yo, hey no, hey what no, hiya. Hey yo. Water on right here uh, because we have uh, those acorns in there so long, so I don't like to put it right in cold water. Not the acorns, the uh, rock. I don't like to put them right in cold water. So we have water on, so that way it'll kind of warm it up, and uh, then it won't crack the acorns. Uh, I keep saying it's on the rocks. Yeah, we go down the um, river bar and gather our cooking rocks. We yeah. gotta be a certain rock, like the black rocks on the river bar. We, we didn't say that to you because there's some over there on the calendar. He's breaking this up. So Dana's getting all the meal that's already been processed down and leached out. She's getting that ready to go. But we like our acorns lumpy, so <laughs> that's how we roll. <laughs> how long do you guys leach your acorns for? We leach them a couple days. All depends on uh, just one rock. Kind of the smaller one. Um, all depends on how much you do. Like that over there, maybe a day, two days. Okay. Two days, yeah. Okay. And, and that's in that bag. Uh huh. But if you do more, you can do it like three days. But I always taste it okay. so that it's not uh, bitter. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. You can also use the tannin for other things. Um, they use the tannin off the acorn to process um, mallard scalps and different different things like that. They put that on their chest. Mm -hmm. the on it. And I'd also use the tannin water after the, the acorn delete to give a little mm -hmm. bit of color, like patine, to my dentalium shells. So that looks that little nice. Is there a small one there? Oof. Right so Dana's getting the cooking locks out right now, and you gotta be fast. That one cracked, so look like that big one did it. Uh, this one? Yeah, see that part been right in there? there. It's been in there way too long. See, look at that one right over there. This one? Because you don't want to burn your cooking basket, so you gotta move those rocks around pretty fast. This one's already cracked too. That one is already cracked. Well, so these rocks have been we'll on for several it. hours to get them hot enough mm -hmm. to we'll heat them in the soup, cook them up. There it is. Mm -hmm. You got water in there? Yep. 
Oh, I just blew it off, sorry. I don't have a big um, cooking pot right now. I did make one for the dancers, but uh, then I tried to make a personal one, but that's it's got out ready to turn up. So as you can see, it's kind of getting thicker. Yeah, not too much. Because you always can put water in, but you can't take it out. So that's why you don't put it in too much at first, so that it'll get cooked up good. You see how it thickens? And you can see it bubbling to where it's uh, just a little bit. A little bit more, maybe. Usually, you don't need two people to do it, but when it's cooking in a basket, I like to have little. You ready to go? Yeah. Because you want to keep your rocks moving and see how it cooks up like that. Beautiful. And those rocks give it a really good distinct taste. Mm. Tastes so good. Do you guys have a specific you wood you use to heat your rocks up? I like to use madrone because fur and, and uh no pitch. No pitch. That's, it, that's what I was thinking too. Yeah. And also um the oak will has that kind of, mm -hmm. a little more ashy too. The oak, right? Yeah. Yeah. And that madrone's nice and hot. Yeah. Cooks hot. Yeah, I love cooking with madrone. Smoking fish. Mm -hmm. Cooking fish on sticks, especially. Oh, I know. Uh-huh, uh-huh. <laughs> right. I'll put a little bit of alder right there at the very end to kind of little, put a little mm -hmm. smoke flavor on there, but... I kind of figured you might use madrone, but I thought I'd ask uh -huh. anyway. Madrone, sometimes in the summertime, it burns too hot for smoking fish. So that is here. true. That is true. So acorns being a really strong sustenance, um, it's our goal is to like keep them canned up and ready to go. My son's really into being athletic and being healthy and Correct. clean eating, all three of my kids. And so we're wanting to have these on our shelf ready to eat. Like Bertha's got going on. Hers are all canned up. Grab them off the shelf. So when you can them, you make them into the, into the mush yeah. here for yeah. a stripe. How long do you do you use a uh, water bath or a pressure canner? Pressure, pressure yeah. Pressure for how pressure. long and at what temperature? I just there's no set time to do it for a while. I just did it without pressure canning them, uh -huh. and then I thought, well, maybe it maybe last longer if I uh, pressure can them. Uh huh. Yeah, so, you knew it. <laughs> yeah, you yeah. heat it up so, so fast. Yeah. <laughs> what I usually do is maybe about 20 minutes. Oh, at 15 or 15, at 10. Hot. At 10 pounds or at 15 pounds? So 10, 10 pounds. 10 pounds. Yeah. We're yeah. exactly a thousand feet for sealant. Oh, yeah. So it might be a little bit different on a coast, but probably not much. You could probably check your book. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, how many rocks you got, Barbara? Um, there's like what? Six, seven? Six, I think. And then we took one, two, three out for cracking. But see when they get too hot, yeah, and, and then because I usually use them a couple of times, and then if if like, you know they just, they just crack if it's too hot when uh, yeah. you use them over. But I use them so. Uh, but see when you that, down that here, the minute. ones that's cracked or get shows a crack in it. Mm. But watch out because it's the volcanic now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's hot. Yeah. Rocks are hot, and and so uh, 
Because they're sharp when they crack, I don't want to just put them someplace out. And it, 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 you see the white kind of looks on it. Sometimes if it's a good rock, and then it eventually it'll get that color from, you know, I don't know what's ever in that uh, rock. Did this rock here, if I tap it a couple of times, it'll probably break. You look for the fine lines on them, you see the fine lines on them where it's going to crack. And then when it cracks and you get in your soup, then you eat rock soup. So you, know, <laughs> yeah. you don't put it in your soup. Keep cracking that crown. <laughs> this, one, this one here, I think it just came out too early. I think it's still a good rock. Which This wasn't really good and hot. But it caught enough to put in there that it started boiling. <laughs> when, um... Uh, a friend of ours, when we was, I was cooking acorns on the river bar, it was dance time, and <laughs> this little boy <laughs> came over to me. He's a grown man now, but he sees me putting those rocks in it. And he said, What are you cooking? Stone soup? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's cute. Can you see how it splattered so many times? Look at that's it. what the kitchen floor looks like sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> we do it in the house sometimes. In the winter time. Yeah, so they say the perfect combination of protein is uh, acorns and fish. It's the perfect meal. Mm. Can't go wrong with that. How thick is it getting to be, Mom? It's in there. I told her don't stir it so much it will get lumpy. Yeah. But yeah, when they're moving like that, boiling like that, you have to kind of stir it so it don't burn like They'll stick to the pot, and that's the rock. Band is cooking in the pot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you don't burn your basket. <laughs> we eat acorns every ceremony, so we're eating acorns throughout the year. They're such an important part of our lifestyle. And it's um, all California Indians eat acorns, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Good variety. Mm -hmm. All different kinds: tan oaks, white oaks. Valley oaks, scrub oaks, Jack, I mean, Frank Gowen. That dog always reminds me his name should have been Jack. <laughs> <laughs> I like call him that every time. <laughs> we just got him a couple of weeks ago. I think it's good. It's not only good food, but it keeps us touched down with, um, creator through our earth through freaking our relationship we have with the environment and our oaks are sacred to us as you all know you can look over there and see how it's boiling mm -hmm. it's cooking away getting ready to feast we got some good food we're gonna be eating with this acorn uh chow or acorn soup here pretty quick we're gonna be chowing down on some Skipper fish and eels and sturgeon and some seaweed. Share a meal. Uh -huh. <laughs> I, I just think I want to thank everybody for coming up and doing this. It is a good program we have, and that uh, wish we could, you know, get it out there more. Mm -hmm. And I think that uh, if it continues on, more people will mm -hmm. want to do this. Mm -hmm. And uh, especially if they, the guy that did this here, his name is Harlan Alvarado. Okay. That lives up in Witch Creek. And he has been making these. There's quite a few women that have that now. Nice. So it's just taking the time out of their life and doing it. Mm hmm. You know, whatever they have to hear about. Mm hmm. So. Any last words, Dana, for the audience? Mmm, acorns are good to eat. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. No, everybody good. should really think about um, let, making your kids eat acorns when they're small. Because if you don't eat them when you're small, you're not going to, you know, like mom said, if you get somebody's acorns that isn't leech good or a little bit bitter, I would say, then you don't want to eat it. Mm -hmm. And then it's like, like anything else, you have a bad experience, you don't want to do it again. Mm -hmm. But every little kid I know likes acorns. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and I, I 
I am not saying people's acorns are bitter. It's <laughs> just that uh, everybody makes them different. Mm -hmm. So I just wanted to say what's loud to Dana and Bertha for sharing um, with us today because this is a strong presence of how we process acorn and what's so vital to us as Indian people. And I'm, I'm glad to be a part of it. And you have me look bad on this one? That, yeah. And so it's inspired me to be more involved with acorns and processing. I mean, we gather and harvest and eat them too, but not at the extent of the, this production. So I'm wanting to get the tools that they have to process them down, because right now we just pound them and trap them the old way, and it's a lot longer process. But it really does touch you down and make you appreciate where we come from and how we live and um, why it's so important, because food is sacred. Food is medicine. And that's how we are when we're preparing something. we got to be in a good mind and a good heart because the food is love. And that's ultimately our medicine is, is love. So that's where we're coming from.